So the box that you see taking up most of the screen today is for Mido. Mido actually give you very large boxes for their watches and usually they come with extra straps and stuff like that. This is the Mido Tribute. This is the Ocean Star Tribute. I bought this actually a while ago. I never did the unboxing for it. Uh, and today that is what I am doing. So this is definitely one of my favorite affordable watches in my collection. Mido make really awesome watches. I think out of the Swatch Group, they probably make one of the better affordable divers, in my opinion. They also make some pretty awesome GMTs. If you guys are familiar with the GMT that they recently came out with, it's an Ocean Star. It's on the larger side, 44 millimeters, but it's a true GMT. It gets a Traveler's GMT. It also gets a Powermatic 80. So it's a GMT version of the Powermatic 80, and it's a true GMT, pretty awesome. So this comes in really nice packaging. It comes in a big box, inner box. There's an outer box and made out of cardboard. In that outer box, you're getting uh, you know, your warranty information, and then, of course, your warranty card, international warranty card. There's also this, I don't know what this is. It's just a little booklet uh, of customer service, I guess. And then uh, this is the hang tag. This was originally $1,150, so it is more expensive than some of the divers from other brands in the Swatch Group. Hamilton and Certina and those brands. Uh, extra links. This was basically new when I got it. Uh, I sized it for myself. Uh, it was in very, very good condition. It came with a sailcloth strap that still has plastic on it. It's signed Mito. Actually a very nice strap with uh, a really nice buckle that is signed Mito. And it comes with a little tool for changing the strap. I have never put it on the strap because one of the reasons why I love this tribute is because of the bracelet. Now the bracelet on here, I think is superb. It really is a very nicely made bracelet um, and it is very glossy. Obviously everything on this watch, the first thing you're gonna notice is everything is polished. There is no brushing on the entire watch. The only matte surfaces that you get are the bezel and the dial. That's basically it. Uh, even the hands are polished. They have a hard, uh, like a high polish on them, um, except for, of course, the second hand, which is orange. That orange matches the orange stitching in that sailcloth strap that it comes with. Uh, comes with a really polished buckle as well. So everything is polished. So um, if you wear this on a regular basis, this polished buckle will scratch a lot. Mine is not that bad. Um, it's held up pretty well, but that's because I'm very careful with my watches. So this does get a Powermatic 80. So I was mentioning uh, before about the GMT. This gets the Powermatic 80. However, this is in a 40 millimeter case, a lot better sized case than, uh, than that uh, GMT. And I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, people do not like it just because of the size of the case. I really want one, but I would like one that's 40 or 42 millimeters. Um, you know, even 40 millimeters, I would love that, but they're not doing it. So, uh, 40 millimeters at the case and then the lug to lug, you get a pretty true lug to lug. You do get male end links on here, but that, uh, male end links, uh, including the male end links, you're getting 49.4, really not bad. 47 millimeters. If you put it on the strap, excellent lug to lug on here. Nice sizable crown with those crown guards. It's like a 6.7 or 6.8 millimeter, uh, crown you get. Uh, crown guards on here. Everything is polished. The uh, signed crown right there is also polished. The case back does have some bead blasting on it, so I did lie. Uh, there is some uh, uh, bead blasting on here, but it's on the case back. You can't see it. Uh, I'll do a close-up of the case back so you can actually see what I'm talking about. There is a starfish on here. That's their logo. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's a little bit of information about the watch. You get a diver's extension. Um, and this diver's extension is actually pretty low profile for the style of diver extension this is. Now, uh, a lot of brands put diver's extensions on their watches or micro adjust on the fly micro adjust for their watches. Now, this basically has no micro adjust except for this little um, on the fly ability to uh, use as a micro adjust. Some watches uh, that I've seen have these clasps and they are very, very nasty. Uh, a lot of micro brands tend to use these and they aren't made well. This is low profile. It's not thick like I have seen on other watches. Um, very smooth and is finished beautifully. Uh, again, you do get a little bit of brushing, uh, excuse me, bead blasting on the underside, uh, and you can use it as a micro adjust. It doesn't look terrible and it feels very nice. It doesn't expose sharp edges. 
uh, like I have seen on other watches. Um, and it's really nice. It actually looks good. It's signed Mito, uh, and it goes really well with the bracelet. Part of the reason why I bought this watch is because of this bracelet. I just like multi-link bracelets, and this one flows like butter. I mean, there is literally, at this price, uh, you have to like this bracelet, and you have to like polishing. I think there is no bracelet as nice as this on the market for the price um, out there, period. This is the nicest bracelet I have seen at this price. The buckle could be a little bit better, but I, you know, it's it's well executed. Like I said, for what it is, it's well well executed. It's really nicely made. Uh, it's the bracelet that really gets me. I love it. I think it's beautiful, um, and and it just feels so nice. It's finished perfectly. Um, very very nice. The bezel uh, is just an aluminum insert. Um, it is not loomed. You have a loom pip, and then the dial is a matte black. You get loom on the hands and indices. It is not very loomed. We'll do a loom shot at the end, but I will show you guys. And then you're getting a day date at the uh, three o'clock position. It just says Mito Automatic Ocean Star Swiss Made. That's it. So obviously it's a Swiss Made watch. Let's listen to the bezel action. So bezel action is actually really good. It Move just a smidge, but it does not feel loose. It's actually, um, if I don't put a lot of pressure, it won't move. If you actually put pressure, it will move. Um, so technically, I don't think it's a wobble. I wouldn't call it that. It's just a little bit of movement. It's not bad at all. You get a very boxed dome sapphire crystal, as you can see, very vintage looking because this is the tribute edition. Um, and of course, a screwed in crown, screwed in case back, 200 meters of water resistance. Uh, overall, a very well executed watch. Uh, maybe just doing a whole entire brush case and brush bracelet on here. I think this would be a little bit more popular than it is. Uh, these already sell pretty well on eBay and places like that. Uh, like I said, it retails for $1,150. It was very hard for me to get this at a good price. And I actually did get it at a very good price on eBay for $650. I made an offer and someone accepted it. Now, um, usually you see these selling for a little bit more than that on eBay for whatever reason. It is more expensive on eBay uh, these days. I think that you have to wait and get the right one, get the right price. So in my personal opinion, I think this is probably the best vintage inspired offering from the Swatch Group in the diver watch category, specifically because of the size. It is 40 millimeters. Uh, Hamilton came out with a watch. I think it's 43 millimeters. Uh, Certina, again, 42 or 43 millimeters. Tiso recently updated the Sea Star and came out with the 2000. That's 45 millimeters. The uh, 1000 still is 43 millimeters, I think. Um, all of those watches get the Powermatic 80. Um, however, this is obviously at a little bit of a different level, I think, in my opinion. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I know there's other watches from the Swatch Group that definitely are awesome, uh, but I think that out of those sort of uh, entry-level categories, I think this is the, the best right now. Anyway, let me show you what's on my wrist, then we'll do a quick loom shot and wrap up the video. Today, I have something that is sort of like a competitor to this watch that's no longer made from Accutron Bulova. This was also a pretty expensive watch when it was uh, when it came out, when it was on the market. It's no longer on the market, as I mentioned. Um, it's not really vintage inspired. It's sort of in between. This was Swiss made or is Swiss made. It has an ETA movement in it. It is not a Powermatic 80, unfortunately, but that was before the Powermatic 80 actually came out. It gets really good bezel action on it. Uh, this has a Pepsi setup. So you're getting, or Coke setup, excuse me, uh, because you're getting a black dial with red and black in the uh, in the bezel. Uh, a very similar, but not exactly the same bracelet, a multi-link bracelet, uh, a little bit bigger. This is a 42 millimeters, I wanna say, somewhere around there. I paid $250 for this on eBay. Uh, and you get to see the ETA movement from the back. You get 200 meters of water resistance. It is a fully Swiss made watch. Pretty awesome, I have to say. Uh, very affordable, huge crown on here. Uh, the date, not as attractive because you do get a color ma a match date wheel on here. Um, you can see it is sizably different. Uh, and you can see there is a size difference here, um, but not that big of a size difference. Really nice bezel on this as well. A lot of polishing, but there's brushing going on. Uh, really interesting watch for those who are interested in something 
like this, but don't want to spend, you know, I think they're going for around seven or eight hundred dollars right now, uh, used and then up to you know a thousand dollars new, uh, v at the very least on the gray market. So there it is on my seven and a half interest. This watch fits beautifully, really does, very comfortable. That has a lot to do with the bracelet. The bracelet and the clasp are very, very comfortable, very low profile, um, and, and work really nicely. It's just an excellent watch. And uh, on a strap, this looks really good as well. I'll probably do a full review for this eventually, um, but uh, and I'll show it to you on the strap when I do. Um, so very quickly, a loom shot, then we're going to wrap up the video. You know, uh, every time I see the loom on this, it's a little bit disappointing because it's a missed opportunity, I think. They, if they put good loom on here, this is almost a perfect dive watch. I mean, from my perspective, except for the polishing, that's the only thing that I would say is bad about this watch, the excess of polish. Um, here's the Accutron that I just had on as well. Uh, another, you know, little bit of a miss with the uh, with the loom. It's not incredible. They did loom the logo there at the 12 o'clock, which I think is really cool, and you get a pip on both of these. Um, Beautiful watches, just gorgeous watches. Uh, but this is about the Mito, and and honestly, I really think this is a very good value, even at that 1150. Uh, but I think that if you can get this on the secondary market, uh, used or uh, like I did, gray market, basically new, um, and and on eBay or something like that. Um, Powermatic 80 is excellent. The case finishing, the quality, overall fit and finish of this watch is really top notch for a very very good price. Um, and I, I think it's a very good looking watch as well. You just have to get past the fact that it's completely polished. Eventually it won't be as bright as you wear it. If you do wear it often, uh, it will scratch up and it won't be as bright. So that's kind of something to look forward to, I guess, if you do that. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, loom has faded. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. The only loom that hangs on is the pip, the hands and the lollipop on the second hand. That's it. Um, you know, that's, you know, it's not, it's not great. Uh, usually the Swatch Group, not that incredible with Loom. Uh, that's unfortunate. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, I, I really do appreciate your comments. So uh, definitely throw one down below and tell me what you think. Please also follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. Uh, please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful to the channel. I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video.